Oh yeah, here we are, live, our very first live Freedom Jam session. We are going to have fun today. For those of you watching live on YouTube or LinkedIn or Facebook, hello, say hello in the comments. This is my first time doing a live streaming to all these different platforms, so this is going to be either like just simply amazing and we're going to learn so much and it's going to be smooth or an absolute disaster. So. I'm going to be getting used to these kind of handles and the posts and the comments and all that kind of cool stuff. But if you could see me and hear me, if you could just drop a little, hey, Ryan, I can see and hear you, and that would be awesome, and we are going to get ready, and we're going to get rocking. So today's class, today's session is all about subscription income, subscription income. So we're going to take it one step at a time. I've got all of my notes here. That we're going to go through. And then at the end, we're going to have time for Q&A. So if you can, um, if you have questions, just post it in there and I will do my best to answer you. Because I think what we can do is there's a lot of really cool stuff. Like I could do this. <laughs> Look at that. I mean, talk about technology. Now I don't know how to take it up. There we go. So we are on live. We're doing subscription income. Uh, I've been creating subscription income for a long time since my first one in 2001 and I've created probably about 50 or so since then. So we'll, we'll I'll show some examples, but again, I want to teach, I'm going to break these down into kind of short lessons, little um, short tactical, practical lessons I've learned creating subscription income, how it can help you. And then we'll open it up for Q and a. Okay. We're good. Let's go. And what I'm going to do, I like to do and then teach as I go. In between some of these main points, I'm going to have a little bit of a pause. Not because I don't know what to say. It's because what I'm going to do is after this live, I'm going to actually break these down into shorter videos that I'm going to then repurpose those as separate videos. That's like a that's like a 10 for one. So I'm basically getting the ability, and you could do the same thing if you do a live, to create like five, six, eight, ten little training videos in one live. So let's see how that goes. So if you see the pause, that is why. And as always, my friends, if you were on here first time, I'm going to show you something. Uh, check this out. I mean, come on. This is like breaking news. Because if you're not a member of our new Freedom Newsletter, you've got to, you just got to go. You got to get on there, freedom.com slash subscribe. And I want to highlight someone here. I want to do a little bit of a shout out before we really get into it. My man, Scott Volker, uh, his YouTube channel is Brand Creators. He was the one who really pushed me to do this. He, he's the one who, because I can't, you, you always have to attribute where you learn things from. Scott's the one who said, Ryan, do a live and then take it and then break it down into shorter videos and distribute it. So go follow Scott at Brand Creators. He's doing an amazing job with uh, doing this, teaching this stuff with Etsy online. And now he just launched another show with his son called Keeping Score with Scott and Scotty, which I love. Uh, and he did give me credit for coming up with that name. We were chatting last week and uh, he's doing some amazing things. So thank you, Scotty V. Ladies and gentlemen, let's go. By the way, that was the awkward pause. <laughs> so the if you want to create a recurring revenue program, a subscription program, a membership site, whatever it is, there's one thing you have to do first above all else. And it's shift your mindset away from it's all about me to it's all about them. And I'll give you a little a quick story here. I did a coaching call years ago with a young guy who was probably like 24, 25. I said, hey, how can I help you? And he said, Ryan, I want to create a recurring revenue program. He said, a continuity income program that is $97 a month. Cool. What do you want to do? I don't care. I said, oh, I, all right. But who's your market? It doesn't matter. Well, what do you want to teach? What can you do? I don't know. I just want to charge $97 a month. And he's like, I want to just do as little. I don't really want to do anything. I just want to set something up, charge $97 a month, and that's it. And I said to him, some form of this, it was years ago, but some form of, 
instead of thinking, what's the least I can do? What's the least amount of effort? The least I can offer for 97 a month, what can I deliver so that they get 10 times, so they get $970 of value every month? That is the shift. That's the key. We always approach it, not we always, many, many times people approach it from, I want recurring revenue. But you try to make it fit and it doesn't always fit. And we're trying to put a square peg in a round hole, a round, round peg in a square, whatever that analogy is, we're trying to do that and it just doesn't fit. So what we need to do is take a step back, forget about yourself, stop being selfish and think about the member. And what can you truly deliver so that you give them that insane amount of value? Now, it's not always about giving more because giving more can actually harm a membership. And that's actually what we're going to be talking about in an upcoming segment. But you have to shift from what's the least amount I could do to charge 10, 20, 50, 100, whatever your price is, to how can I deliver the most insane value and make it a no-brainer. And here's the thing. If you ask me, hey, Ryan, can you take a look at my offer? Is this a no-brainer? Then it's not a no-brainer. It's It should be really clear, right? Like you, it must be clear. And if you're not sure if it is, then it's not. It's not. Like it, there's no black or white. It's either absolutely clear where people be jumping to give you their credit card or they're not. Okay, so that was, that was my first little segment. How are we doing? Woo, I'm loving this. Okay, so when it comes to the value and the pricing, let me, let me look at the next note here. Okay, let's talk about setting up a recurring revenue program and pricing specifically your offer. Do you go monthly or do you go yearly or do you offer both? Now, in general, every time I've done it or tested and every time I've, I've coached clients, when you do yearly, most oftentimes you're going to get a higher lifetime customer value. So for example, let's say you want to charge either $30 a month or 29 yeah, $30 a month or $300 a year. So they get a little bit of discount for the yearly. On average, now this is across the board, up and down different markets. The average membership length is around three and a half months, right? I've been doing this for 23 years. That Those are the numbers. Some people stay for a year. Some people cancel after a day. Like it's, but it average, that's about three and a half months. So if you do the math, right? Someone, someone joins for $30. And they say for three and a half months, what are they worth? Quick, who's the first one to answer this correctly? $30 a month times three and a half months is, so I think it's like 105. I know there's a little bit of a delay, so I'm going to answer for you. But if they sign up for a full year, you get the full 300. So that's why it's an average lifetime customer value. However, if you do yearly, you're usually going to end up with less total members. So you have to ask yourself this question, is it what's more important? And there's no right or wrong, okay? There is no right or wrong. Is it more important to get more revenue potentially or more have more impact, you know, reach more people? Because the monthly, the lower monthly is often going to get more people, but you might actually make a little bit more money with the yearly membership. So... It's good on the front. What's nice about a yearly membership is you get all that money up front and you could reinvest it back into your marketing or a Lambo or whatever else you want, uh, like whatever, <laughs> whatever that is. But it's good to offer both. So I like to kind of promote the yearly and say, but we do have a monthly option for those that are interested. If you're going to do yearly or monthly, you have to think about your level of commitment. And we're going to address that in the next video. Okay, we're back. Do you offer yearly or monthly out of the gate? This is a big decision we're going to have to make. Here's the reality. I always want to tell you the truth. I'm never going to sugarcoat it. I'm not trying to sell you some mastermind and give you this. I'm just giving it to you straight. This is from me doing this, okay? And I know because I am not perfect, 
and we all get distracted. You have ideas. Oh my God, I want to go this. I want to do this market. I'm not sure. Do I offer this? Do I do this program? Even with me, I was like, do I call this Ryan Lee TV? I'm like, oh, no, I don't want to call it that. Let me call it freedom. If you're not 100% committed, if you don't know if it's going to work, don't start off with a yearly membership because now you're locked in and now you're committed. If you don't have a list, if you don't already have a good social following, if you're starting from absolute scratch and you don't even know if it's something that people really, really want, then I would say start with just the monthly option because a monthly option at least gives you an out. It gives you an out if it's not working for you. It gives you an out if it's not working for them because it's really crappy. And I've seen this happen a lot. A fitness pro. Hey, Ryan, I launched this membership. It's $300 a year. And I launched and I only have three members. And I promised a weekly live video, a live workout video. And I've been doing it for three months, but I'm not making any money. I, I processed $1,000, but now I'm like three months in and I haven't got any new members to join. And now you're on the, you're either going to have to do this for a year or you're going to have to refund everybody or at least prorated. So the reality is if you're not sure, if you don't have a big following, offer both. I was able to come out of the gate with this new Freedom Clubhouse yearly and monthly because I'm committed, because I'm all in, and because I already have a list, right? Um, so it doesn't, so you have to be careful of who you're watching and who you're following. Because if you're following someone and you're like, well, they have a yearly, like Brendan Bouchard had a yearly, yeah, he has a couple of million followers, right? You probably don't have that following that he does, so he could do it. So be really careful who you're watching. But again, if I were advising you, I would say if you're not sure, if you don't have a big list, big following, then at least test the waters with a monthly and telling people that. Like that's the thing when you come out with an offer. Say to them, hey, this is what we're doing. This is what we're going to try. Let's go for the first month. Let's see what happens. If at the end you're digging it, cool, stick around. And if I'm liking it, I'll stick around too. And let's just go. Let's just try this together and see what happens. Just be open, honest, and transparent. And that's the best way to do it. But start monthly. And if it's working and you're getting traction, then you could offer something yearly. All right. Look at that. We are moving. Those of you on live, give me a little shout out. How you feeling, everybody? Woo! We're having fun here in YouTube Live. And I did a little poll at the top. Uh, I think it went into YouTube. I'm not even sure where. Uh, seeing if you guys have recurring revenue programs already. I'd love to hear that. So you want to start a subscription program or membership. And I get the question, well, what do I price it at? What's the right price? And memberships for, for a long time, especially in the online marketing world, were priced a little bit higher. You could get away with charging $47 for like one cheesy webinar a month. And like, you're good, right? And people joined. Things have changed. Things have shifted. Prices have come down. But now it's swung so far to the other side that there's a lot of people who are publishing more um, premium newsletters. And they're coming out of the gate at $5 a month. And I got to say, that's a really tough number to make work. So it's I, I actually received a message yesterday from someone. And he's running um, a, a, a newsletter. And he's offering a premium membership. And it's for people in the metro area, especially for um, black entrepreneurs. And it's awesome. He was asking my advice and I was helping him out. And he wants to come up with a low price. And I said, there's there's two questions you have to ask yourself. And, I'm, and I want you to, all of you watching this, all three of you, um, to, to, to think long and hard about this. Number one is what's your financial goal? With specifically with a recurring revenue program. So let's say you want to make Whatever your numbers, and there's no judgment. Let's say your goal is a hundred thousand dollars a month, right? If you charge five dollars a month, we're not even talking about churn. We're just talking like top line revenue. Five dollars a month to get to a hundred thousand, you need was you need twenty thousand paid members, paid members, which means if you take a step back for a second, and it's okay if I convert one percent of my total email list to paid membership, you would need 2 million email subscribers. That's a lot. 
Like that's a lot. So start reverse engineering. Now I'm not saying this is the only metric you should do and you should only base it on, you know, this is what I want to do. It's not that. It's thinking about, okay, realistically, what do I have to do to get there? How many members am I going to need? And is that a real number? And how much effort am I willing to put in to get to that number? So to get to $100,000 a month, you know, five, $5 a month, you need 20,000 people. $10 a month, you need 10,000. Still a lot, right? $20 a month, you need 5,000. Now, now we're getting a little bit more real, right? $30 a month, you need whatever that number is. Now we're getting out of my depth <laughs> for, for math skills. But you can start to do the number. So that at least gives you a like a starting point of are these numbers real considering what my goal is? And again, I just picked a hundred thousand dollars. You have to, there's no right or wrong. You do the number that works for you. So, so start there, start there because you don't want to say $5 a month and then like, Oh my God, now I need five, you know, 20,000 members. And the second thing, which is even more important is after you get out of the clouds and you know, you, you're out of dreamland, you're like, okay, now I got to actually do it. How are you going to acquire your customers and your members? Like, what's your traffic strategy? And if you say, well, Ryan, I want to do paid traffic. Okay. Well, what are the conversion rates? Again, if we're looking at 1% and how much is it going to cost you to get a lead? It might cost you $2.50 to get an email subscriber. So to get 100 free email subscribers, it's going to cost you $250. And if 1% one, one, 1 of those joins for $5, you spent 250 to make back five for the first month, right? And the next, so, and if they only stay for, e even if they stay for a year, that's only $50 back. You're going to lose money very quickly with that plan. That's why $5, $5 a month, if that's your only thing, if that's your only, if you're like, I'm not taking, I'm not doing advertisers, I'm not having courses, I'm not selling anything. That's my only thing is this $5 a month. You're going to go bankrupt. Uh, you're going to lose everything. So what's your plan and your strategy to get customers and clients and members. And if, it, if it's a paid traffic strategy, the numbers have to work. So you start with what's your goal, you start reverse engineering, you start looking at, okay, what's my traffic strategy? And now we start at least getting a hit moving target. With pricing though, I'll give you this advice. It's much, much easier to raise the price than to lower it. So right now, the clubhouse is, let me see if I can get this thing going here. We are playing with some live stuff. Okay, I'm going to present. I'm gonna share my screen. Okay, so right here, you can see that this is the, the page right now to, up to do Clubhouse, but it's $29, right? It's 29, which, okay, $29. It's much easier for me the next round to say, okay, hey, founders membership is over. Now it's 39 a month and everyone who's in is locked in. You never have to pay a dollar more versus me coming out of 29 and saying, oh man, this thing isn't working. All right, now it's only 15. And everyone who's in paying 29, like, what are you talking about? Like, I just paid 29, right? Or I'm, I'm paying 29. And then everyone's like, wait, that doesn't make sense. So it's better to start lower and then you could raise your price. Please grandfather people in. It's the right thing to do. Now, I know it's tougher sometimes with software and more cost, uh, but for most content-based, there's not really an extra cost for you to deliver. So do the right thing. I have one thing in our business. We have one line that whether I had my supplement companies or the current company, Freedom, my whole step, anyone, I always say, they say, well, Ryan, what do I do in this situation? I say, run it through one filter. What would I want if I were that member, right? What would I want if I were them? And then the answers come to you. So there you go. That's your pricing strategy. We got so much more to dig in with that. Keep checking more videos here. By the way, if you're liking this, if you haven't yet, subscribe to this YouTube channel. I know some of you are on other things in Facebook Live. Subscribe, like, comment, keep it rocking. Next topic. Pause for effect. Should you offer a lifetime membership? No. Next video.
<laughs> uh, not a good idea. It it makes sense for a, a temporary cash situation. So in other words, you get all this money that comes in, right? So if my membership is $2.99, I say, hey, for $1,000, you get lifetime access. You might be able to sell it, sell a bunch of them and make, you know, fifty, a hundred thousand dollars right away. But now you have to serve them forever. And when I say forever, I mean I still have I, I did a lifetime membership before I I sold freedom years ago. And then I have it back now, but I sold it and it was a completely different business, different company. And I said people who joined, you know, six, seven, eight years ago who are saying, okay, now do I get access to this for free? And you kind of have to honor it. Right. Even though it's a completely different company, it's been it's changed hands a few times, but I'm still going to honor it. But you're locked in. And I've had I'll do courses that have nothing to do with freedom, nothing to do with the lifetime membership. I could do it. I could offer, you know, I could open a coffee shop and let's say, well, Ryan, <laughs> I got a lifetime membership, so I should get free coffee for life. I'm like, what are you? So you are going to be indebted to them and you're going to keep serving them. And it's OK at the beginning when you get that big influx of cash. But when they're still asking for things years later, not the right move. So it, I caution you against using Lifetime. Uh, one of my clients did it. Uh, he has a big podcasting community, offered Lifetime, and then he stopped and then started offering yearly. So I would not offer Lifetime. I would do yearly or monthly, but not pay once, get access to this content forever. Okay. Questions coming. I'll, I'll answer that. Someone just asked a question. Do I own freedom or did you sell it? I had a different version of freedom years ago and then I sold it and they ran it for about a year or two. And then I, I own it back again, but I own it back, took the whole thing down, restart it. And now everything is hundred percent brand new, but that was an old version of freedom. Okay. Next topic. How do you handle cancellations? What do you do when people want to leave, when they want to cancel? What do you do? And there's a couple of pieces of, of advice here. Number one is you have to make it easy for them to cancel. You must make it easy. I had a piece of software I was using for a previous membership, maybe two iterations ago, and it was a shopping cart and members couldn't self cancel. And it was a nightmare. Because they'd email, can I cancel? Can I not? And and it was, and I missed a bunch. I mean, sometimes it happens. It goes into spam and you don't see it, or they send it to an old email address and they wanted to cancel. And I had one person who asked to cancel a year ago, and I had no idea. They sent it to an old email address that wasn't even active anymore, and they were getting billed for a year. So of course I had to refund them and it felt terrible. Make it easy. So if you're using software, that's one of the first things you should ask is can members self cancel or do they have to email you the old days of marketing which was awful people especially in the supplement game they'd make it really hard for you to cancel they would do these if anyone remembers the old days of like acai berry these scam things awful you'd say well you have to do it within 10 days and you have to you know repackage it and you have to put it in you know shiny gold wrapping paper and then you have to write a hand no written note you know notarized and you know you've got to deliver it by pony like they made it impossible or call this number and then no one ever picked up do the opposite i am now doing let me show you what i've started offering here um let me let me show you this so what i do so i make it so easy so that in freedom if you want to cancel i even show you like just go in and cancel, like click this button that says cancel premium subscription. Now, if you're going to let people cancel, this is very controversial. And as you'll see, you might say, well, Ryan, everything you're teaching me, <laughs> you're teaching me how to lose money and leave money on the table. And my philosophy has always been, always, it always will be, it's people over profits. and I want people to have a good experience. I want them to feel good about working with me. That's why some of you here right now have been with me for a decade. Some of you have been with me for 20 years. Some of you are just finding me right now. Hello and welcome. But 
make it easy for them to cancel. The, the, again, the nightmare I had, the last card I used, people couldn't self-cancel. So make it easy for the cancel. Then here's, here's a really crazy piece of advice. You ready for this one? Let them go. Do not say, oh, well, hey, you're going to leave. You know what? I know it's 29 a month between you and I. 10 bucks. Give me 10 bucks and it's your, and you'll stick around. I think that's a bad, I think that sets a bad precedent. I think maybe some people would take advantage of it, but it doesn't feel right because now they're thinking, man, I'm a sucker. I've been paying, I've been paying Ryan $30 a month when I could have been only paying 10. Is everyone else paying 10? Have I been getting ripped off? It's a really bad way to build trust. I don't like when I do that if I want to cancel something and they offer me a lower price. Even though, again, some will stay. And if you're looking at it, if you're running the business through a spreadsheet and you're not looking at long term and you're looking at short term and you're looking at things, you're like, hey, hey guys, we saved not, you know, 9% an extra $2,000 a month and all this stuff. But I do think it hurts your long term brand. So let people cancel on their own. And when they cancel, let them go. This isn't for you. Cool. That's that's fine. We'll see you. Maybe you come back. Maybe you don't. But either way, we wish you the best and just let them go. It's it's just a much cleaner business to run. And if you're liking that comment, like this post, give a little heck yeah. I'm feeling this. Let them go. If you disagree with me, that's fine too. Uh, I'll just ban you and ignore the comments. So let's keep going to the next video. All right. There's a lot of questions coming in here too, live. And I'm going to make sure after this, we answer the questions. So retention. Retention is a big word when it comes to subscriptions, when it comes to membership sites. How do you keep them? How do you get that retention up? In the content space, the barrier is usually people say, well, you can probably tolerate about a 10% monthly churn. But 10% monthly churn means in 10%, if you're not, if you're not filling it with new members, you're out of business. 10% is high. I say the warning sign, I have a much higher threshold. I say the war or lower threshold, whatever, however you want to phrase it. My threshold is about 3%, 3.5%. Like if it starts getting more than that, there's a problem. There's a problem with content. There's a problem with follow-up. There's a problem with the system, with the process, with the content. There's something going on. There's something broken that you have to fix. And often it's as easy as emailing someone. Like, and I, I do this when the first person canceled uh, my membership, not this one, a previous one I had, and he's, he buys everything of mine. And I said to him, okay, I emailed him. I said, it's canceled. No worries. Um, do you mind though? Just letting me know why you canceled. Like, what was the thing? And he shared with me, you know, it was, I just wasn't ready and it was, it was too advanced or whatever the, the reason was, but it's really important to get insight in their words, not, Hey, why did you leave? You know? And it's like a click a box. I think using their words and their words are then you could use a future copy to address it. Right. And, and future updates and how do you help them? I don't, think I've ever had anyone cancel and saying it's not enough content. It's often, and you'll hear this a lot, it's often too much, right? It's too much stuff. I can't keep up. I can't keep up, which leads me to the next big idea in terms of content is how much content do you create? And that is our next video. And our next video is coming up in 30 seconds after a water break. Woo! Here we are, Freedom Live, baby. I like this. How are you guys um, enjoying this free live experience so far? Good. This is cool. Um, I love do I. It's I love doing live. How many of you on right now prefer doing a live training versus pre-recorded? Just curious. Write in live or pre-recorded. Uh, because it's just everyone's different, and it's you. Get, you just gotta find your thing. 
You just got to find your thing. Okay. So I talked the value shift pricing. Okay. Yeah, some of you like doing lives. Yeah, lots of live. All right. How much content do you give? So when I first started, let me show you one of my big fitness sites. Look at this baby. This was, uh, let me show this. So I did this. Working now online and I was looking, I'm like, well, the model in the <laughs> adult entertainment space at that time was this like pass, right? You get a pet, you buy one membership to one weird fetish and you get access to 50 more, right? So I modeled it in the fitness industry and I called it workout pass and it was buy one membership and you get all these other things for free. And at the time, like 15, 16 years ago, this was great. This did really well because there wasn't as much free content available, right? You couldn't go to YouTube and have 500 workouts at your fingertips for free. So that was, that was working then. This doesn't work as well now. It's really, really hard to make work because there's millions of hours of, on YouTube. There are huge players you're battling against, and you cannot out-content the competition. So this model used to work well. The fire hose, the Netflix, the buffet, the all-you-can-eat. Now, instead of it, if I were to come back in the fitness thing, and I was kind of ahead of my time because here was another one of my fitness membership sites, was this one. This was Quattro Fitness, and this was for men. These were four-minute workouts. This was... 18 years ago. That's me. I filmed that in the park across from my condo at the time. Uh, but it was, it was very niched. It was for guys. It was for guys who were busy and it was four minutes workouts. And that was a membership site. I think that was a $20 a month. And that worked because it was niche. So if I was starting over again, I would do something more like this, as opposed to the big, all you can eat, you know, buffet. So you have to pick what, so the trend right now, it's less is more. Even in free in the new Freedom Clubhouse, you can see here, it's not about overwhelm, right? It's not about look at all the stuff you get. It's just a few things, right? Every month we're going to do this live training. We're calling them the uh, Clubhouse sessions, right? One focused thing. We add maybe once a week, another training or something from the archives. We have a vault of the previous trainings, and then we have a, a membership group. So it's not, here's 5,000 things. And I still see people making that mistake of trying to do, build a membership site and trying to be the Netflix for whatever, right? For real estate agents, it's too much. And then what happens is the number one reason why they want to cancel what do you think they say? What do you think the number one reason people cancel is on my membership or any membership site? One word, right? Well, it's not real. Well, it could be one word. Usually the word, it's like, I'm overwhelmed or I can't keep up or it's too much or, you know, you added 19 hours of webinar trainings. I, I just can't keep up with this. So it's too much. So now think curation over volume. Think, hey, I'm going to take all the stuff going on. I'm going to go through the 500 best workouts or the best recipes, the best whatever. And I'm just going to give you the best. Like, Time has to be a factor in your marketing messaging, especially for recurring revenue programs and subscriptions. It's not about more, right? It's not about here's all this cool stuff. It's not about that anymore. It's about just editing, giving less, not less good stuff, like good stuff, but just less of it, right? So make sure to subscribe to my free newsletter at freedom.com. This is sponsored by freedom.com. Uh, less is more good stuff, quality, edit, and say something different, right? Don't just give what everyone else is doing. So if you're going to be more of a curator, then add 
something to it. Add your heart, your soul, add a little bit of spice, right? If you're like a kind of semi-sarcastic New Yorker like me, uh, add that to it. Don't be afraid to do it. Like that's what people are going to stick around for. So less is more, especially now, especially with all this content and AI and everything going on. Save people time and you'll see what's going to happen. Now we got more stuff coming for you here. So let's go to the next video. Hold on, water break. All right, I'm going to go one more, even though I, ha I have more, but I'm going I'm to save these because there's so much that we're going to talk about. If you're liking this, do me a favor, below, is, um, just say more, please. If you, if I get like, or give me a yes, if I get like 50 yeses, I'm going to do another one, and then I'm going to do another one. And if you need it, if you want it, I'll do these every week. How about that? And we could talk about traffic. We could talk about, like, we could do everything. I, I want to show that, so my theory so I'm going to start this. I'm going to do this little bit. I'm going to do this little video rant. I believe that now you can give away like 95% of your stuff. And there's still people that are going to join because they want the implementation. They want the over the shoulder. They want more support. They want community. It's, it's about giving more. And one of my friends did a recent, uh, training and he said it was um, it's more about like give them useful useful but incomplete and that just feels wrong I mean, that doesn't feel like you're coming from a let's change lives mentality that comes from a i'm gonna keep like good stuff here so i think why not give useful and complete, right? Instead of useful, but useful and incomplete, useful, but incomplete, useful and complete. Why not? Right? It's the, I think the biggest challenge right now for all of us as content creators and, and information marketers and experts and publishers, it's not content, especially if you got chops. Like I see Billy Beck just comment. The guy trains, he's been Tony Robbins trainer for decades, trainer of the, I've known Billy for 25 years. The guy's got chops, right? The only thing most of us are missing, especially those who've been in the trenches for a while, it's exposure. I am, I'm the walking billboard for that because I've been behind the scenes of some of the biggest, most successful people online. Uh, and a lot of people don't know me. Some of you, I, I get every day, Oh man, Ryan, you have good stuff. How come I never heard of you before? It's like they're shoving a knife right in my back. It's 100% my fault because I was I was marketing guarded. I was marketing with a foot on the brake. I was like, well, let me, I don't want to teach that. I don't want to talk about that because that's like some of my good stuff. Like all this stuff I'm sharing right now, it's not stuff, these young marketers, what they do is they read something or take a quote or learn something and then they just change their own words and they act like they came up with it. I learned this stuff through doing this for a couple of decades, like in the trenches, wins and losses. Like I'm showing you membership sites from 20 years ago. So this is all real world. And this stuff is normally the stuff I would hide and keep in, like keep to myself. So I am committing now, let's we'll see if it works, <laughs> to just training, teaching, giving away most of my good stuff with the hopes that some of you, some of you will come here and join me in the clubhouse, right? Like, hold on, like, I can't share this here. So like, maybe there's going to be a percentage that are going to say, you know what, Ryan, I like you. I want to be in your community. I want to be able to ask you questions. Let's go. And there's going to be some people that are paid. Most won't, right? Like when you do a premium offer, most people are not going to take it. Even if you do a really good job, like really, really good job, you're, I got to add myself back. Um, 
if you do a really good job marketing, you'll still only get a small percentage to join a course, a membership. It might be 1%, it might be 3%. It could be up to 10%, but that means 90, 95, 97% are people are going to say no and they're never going to spend. And that's okay. And you have to be okay with that. You don't want to come in unrealistic and say, hey, I have a list of 1,000 people. I'm launching a membership site. I think I'm going to get 600. You're smoking. <laughs> You're smoking something because that's not the way it works. But we need more exposure, all of us, myself included. And that's why now like, I'm all in. And at, at 51, I feel like I got my second wind. And I'm finally committed. And I think what we have to do is find that one thing that we're really – I'm not going to use the word passionate because that's so overused and so like fluffy. Find the one thing like you want, right? You want whatever that goal is, whatever that thing is, and just freaking go for it and say, I'm pouring everything into this. Yeah, I got a hundred ideas. Yeah, I want to do a fitness thing. And yeah, me, you know, I want to open an 80s club shop. Yeah, but you know what? I'm going all in with this and I'm focusing on giving stuff away, connecting relationships all in the front, knowing that going to build exposure, going to build a list, right? Get them from social to your list. And then you email really good stuff. The whole freedom philosophy, I've, I've dialed all this stuff down to three things. Grow, write, and bank. You grow, you focus on the traffic, all the stuff you're doing, giving it away. Then you write really good email. Just watch the stuff I'm doing. I think it's pretty good. And then bank is then you monetize, right? Monetize. Membership sites, subscriptions, courses, programs. This, the focus of, of this video is, is about subscriptions, but that's what you do on the back end. So if you're with me and you're watching this, drop a little all in, baby. I'm going motivational. T Billy Beck got me all pumped up and Tony Robbins. I'm saying, write down all in on there. I want to see people all in because it really does make a difference. And most of us are not focusing enough on the awareness. We're hiding everything. Well, I don't want to give that thing away because they're not going to pay me. I got news for you. If you give away crappy stuff, they're going to think your paid stuff is crap, right? They're going to think it's crap. So give away really good stuff, original stuff. Don't copy everyone else. Take chances. Put yourself out there and watch what happens. And watch what happens when you are rocking at freedom.com. Let's keep going. If you're not a subscriber yet, subscribe to my YouTube because we got so much good stuff coming. All right. What I'm going to do now is let's just do Q&A. I want to do Q&A. So start firing your questions right now. Give me, because there was a lot of questions that were coming in, but I couldn't see them all because there's so many that were that were coming in. Someone at whatever question you have, let's keep this topic focused on subscription, on recurring revenue. I still have more stuff, but I'm, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do another live training. And then if this works, we're going to keep going. Okay. So first question, look at this. So this question is from Transformative Bureau. That's a cool name. I probably totally butchered your name, but... What are the best evergreen subscription models in your business? So the best evergreen subscription models is still going to be top. First, you have to think of what your topic is. So, so your topic has to be a topic that's evergreen. So you cannot do it. So evergreen, for those of you who don't know, evergreen is something we, it's like the old Ronco said it and forget it. It's you create content once and it's dripped automatically. So if I come in day one, I'm getting volume one. And if Kevin comes in day two, he's getting volume. If he comes in a week later, he's still getting volume one on the first day. So everyone's getting the same thing. It's just dripped. It only works for content that doesn't change. Workouts are not going to change. The workouts that I was showing from this, from Quattro Fitness, this, this thing right here, Like that, I, that could still be running. So it's stuff that doesn't change. However, if you were trying to do an evergreen topic about AI, that's going to be outdated in a week. You can't say, oh, this is the greatest thing with AI because if, if they got it last month, it's already outdated. 
you know, chat GPT has already moved on. So it's got to be a topic that makes sense. It's normally going to be, it's going to be health. It's going to be personal development, you know, mindset. It could be some hard skills like plumbing, right? If you're going to teach someone how to do plumbing skills, most of the stuff, I mean, I'm sure there's technology that changes with it, but most of the basics are going to be there. So it has to be the right topic. And then in terms of deliverable, it's got to be something that's easy to consume. So I did a case study with uh, a good friend and longtime client, Jeff, and they had an, a health evergreen t- subject, uh, evergreen membership, which was essentially just a PDF file. Every month, members would get a PDF file. Here is your recipes a day. It was almost like a digital magazine. Now, what's funny is they had tried at the beginning to make it a big membership site with software and all these things, and it bombed. And they just said, let's strip it down. Let's just give people the recipes. That's all they want. It was a PDF. At their peak, he since he has since sold the company. It was fifteen dollars a month, and they had over twenty six thousand members. Twenty six thousand. So I would still do that, and I would take that all day. So that's what I would do. I would still I still like PDF. I'm a big fan of PDF type memberships where it's just kind of simple, easy to read. Here's the workouts. Here's the recipes. Here's what's happening in mindset. Here's exercise, mindset exercise you can do. And I would deliver it PDF. You could do it right through email. It doesn't have to be a fancy membership site. Most membership software allow you to drip, but that's what I would do. So that was a great question. More videos to come if you like this. All right. Great question. Okay. So this question is coming in from the Vibe Minds. Oh, that looks like Jay. So Ryan, what made you decide to use Beehive and go the premium newsletter route for school as a more live community? What's your thought process? So I am using Beehive. So Beehive is a is a pretty cool software. Let me show you what's going on. So what I like about Beehive, it's it's a newsletter. It's really lean. It's really fast, and I like because they're they're building new features all the time. I actually had a call because I said, I'm gonna start hacking this thing and turn it into a membership site. And the founder, Tyler said, Ryan, could I kind of pick your brain? Because I know you've been doing it for a long time. I'd love your thoughts on how we can make our thing better. So we talked and they're adding a lot of new features, but the reality is I wanted something selfishly that was an all-in-one. I wanted one place where I could have all my stats and my premium. And I like that you can have content that, let me show you. That, that you can protect certain things. So you can say, let me do a live thing here. Okay. So here we go. So hopefully you can see this. So this is what it looks like when you come, come here on the front. So if you go here, right, there are certain things that are going to be for members only. So this is... members only, right? You got to log in, but what you can do, that wasn't the greatest example. This is a better example. Okay. So what I did was all I had to do was insert one little line of code. You press a button and then everything below that line is now paid, right? So now you you have to pay to watch those trainings. So for example, this is a, the reason I can see this is because I'm already logged in as a member. That's why. I was like, oh, wait, I think it's all broken. Um, but I put like, I, I uploaded all the videos here. So this is all for our essentials course. But I like it because people who are not members would see this and would say, hey, you're not a member. You need to log in to 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 look, to watch it. So that that's what happened. I'm, I'm logged in as a member. But otherwise, it, there, would, there would be a thing coming up. So I, I, like, I like that. I like that feature. I like that. Their newsletter stuff is really, really good. The the analytics are insane. The stuff you could do, it has a built-in referral program. And I like to play. I like to try new things. I like to be ahead of the curve. I know email is finally becoming popular again. Everyone's like, oh, email's dead. And I'm like, wait, you know, you can actually make money with email. So that's my strength. So I'm like, let me work with this platform that I think is going to be a unicorn company and let me get in early and let me show and let me be the poster child for this and let me show all the cool things we can do. So that's why I'm playing with Beehive. I like it. There's a lot of options. 
you could use school, but school didn't have all of these great features. And uh, I like, I just like what Beehive's doing. So, and if you're enjoying this, make sure to subscribe and like this. So we are going now, hold on. So now we are doing more. So keep those questions coming. This is great. This is cool stuff. Okay. So here's a question from Kevin. Can you do a course that leads into a membership? Absolutely. In fact, you should. I like, I, memberships are very hard. And this was going to be something I was going to cover on the live, but I'll cover it in a future one. Memberships are very hard to sell on the front end. Meaning if you do a Facebook ad to join my membership, the chances of someone subscribing if they don't know you is going to be almost impossible. Like it's really, really tough. Unless you're a household name, unless people know you, unless you're a Netflix. If it's like, hey, I'm Dr. Kevin and join my baseball training membership, Facebook ad to that, almost impossible. But Facebook ad to a $20 program or a $20 book or a $50 course or a $99 course, and now they're in and now they're going through it. Like, you know what? This is actually pretty good. Like, I like this guy, Kevin. He's got more. Oh, he has now monthly trainings and updates, and I can ask Dr. Kevin McGovern questions. I'm in. So I like selling other things on the front instead of a membership site. So almost look as the membership uh, like on the back end for all this stuff. And I call it like a catch-all membership site that all these kind of courses can kind of feed into. So I would definitely do courses and programs and one-time things on the front and membership on the back. That gives me an idea for another video I'm going to do right now. That's going to be a standalone. Thank you, Kev. Appreciate that. So what do you do when you have lots of different front-end products and want to have recurring revenue on the back. And this is where we can get stuck sometimes. We start thinking of, well, I'm teaching in this broad market of health, but I have one product that has to do with recipes. I have a product that's a fitness program. I have a product that's mindset. Like what's my membership? Do I have to create three different memberships? Do I need a fitness membership, a nutrition me membership, a mental health membership? So what you should start thinking of is if you take a step back for a second, what, it's what I call a catch-all membership or catch-all continuity program, where it's a little bit more broad, but it it is the back. It could be the back end for all that stuff. So maybe your back end health membership has every month they get a new workout, and then every month there's another recipe thing, and every month there's a new there's a new training about mental health. So there's these different things rotating through your membership that cover all the bases as opposed to creating three different memberships because three different memberships are going to be challenging to run unless you have a big team. And if we're talking like one person empire, it's much better to have this catch all continuity program that all of the things can feed into. And that's what I do with freedom. It's, it's a little bit of catch. It's not just recurring revenue. It's not just how to do a newsletter. It's not just how to do courses or coaching. We cover a little bit of everything. So all of the new front end things I'm going to be doing in the front end lead gen, is going to lead freedom and everything to the back end of that. So catch-all continuity is a really interesting concept I coined a few years ago. But I think for some people, I, I remember the, they're like, oh my God, that makes so much sense as opposed to being super niche. Now remember though, catch-all continuity, if it's a little bit more broad in general, it's not going to work as well on the front end, right? It's got to be a back end. And there were times I had my membership. So I had, I had a play, membership called Ryan Lee's Playground. You couldn't even find it. The only way you found it and could join is when you were on my list. That was it. You couldn't even see it. I wanted people in my world knowing my vibe and my content before they even thought about joining. You get a much better qualified person as well. So catch all continuity, bow the win, keep on rocking. If you're liking this, more videos to come. All right. Thank you, Kevin, for that. That set up a nice little video there. If you haven't subscribed to my YouTube yet, please do it now. If you haven't subscribed to the Freedom Newsletter, do it now. If you haven't upgraded to Clubhouse, come on in. Come in. Even just try it for a month. It's less than a dollar a day. And if you do it for a year, it's like 81 cents. 
So freedom.com, go check it out. That's my commercial. Now back to the show. Okay. Let's see. I have a lot of questions. And if I don't have time to answer all these questions, I'm going to do more of these. If you're in the clubhouse, I'm in there. We have a private uh, a private group, and I'm in there every day. I'm going to be answering questions. We're going to do some Facebook Lives in there as well. But uh, that's where – that's the only place I'm going to coach. I get emails every day, specific questions, and now I'm just saying join the clubhouse, and that's the one place I go because I don't do one-on-one -on -one coaching anymore. So just go there and ask the questions if I don't answer it today. Okay. So this, this question is from Val. Ryan, you mentioned that initially people don't know you. People didn't know you. Crazy, huh? Is it better to start with a personal brand if no list in starting out? Great question. There is, there's no right or wrong, right? Uh, you have to do what feels right to you. I've come to the, I've, I've gone around and around. I've had personal brands. I've had company brands. The, so I've sold over the years, I've sold six different companies, six different businesses that I've started and sold. Not one of them was ryanlee.com because a personal brand, that's the thing. There is no exit, which is fine. You don't have to start a business to try to exit it. But I do think in some ways, so a personal brand, it's easier to start. There's only one you, even if someone else has the same name, there's one you, there's one Ryan Lee, there's one Val Niles. So it's easier to kind of stand out and use your personality. But it does limit you in a way. It's hard to build a community, a movement. Like even my recent shift away from like ryanlee.com and to freedom, was it was a tough choice. Like I, months I thought about it. I agonized over it. I'm like, well, what do I do? Because my personal brand, it's so easy. It's fun. But it's not t-shirtable. Like no one's going to wear a Ryan Lee t-shirt. It, it'd be really awkward. I personally, I can't. I don't have that much of an email. Like I, I, I cringe if someone said that. Like, oh, if I see someone wearing my name on their shirt, it'd be kind of weird. So I like, I like what I, what I call is more of a an adjacent branding model, where you use your personal brand to power a company brand, right? So personal. So your name and your face is there, but it. Let me show you. Let me show you an example of like the best example I know of one of my students. Let me open this for a second. And then I'm going to show you an example of someone who's done it right, where it's your personal brand, but you still power a company. So let me show you this. Hang with me one second. And I got to make sure the video isn't the echo is going to be really weird. Okay. So this is this is probably one of my most well-known students, Jeff Cavalier. So he came to me. He was a physical therapist. He'd work with the Mets. And he said, Ryan, I want to build a business. I want to build a brand. So this concept, I remember sitting in the conference room, like Athlean X. So taking his his background as as sports training, but doing it with getting lean and and a fitness program. So now he has, you know, 13 and a half million people, but it's Athlean X is the brand, but Jeff Cavalier is still powering it. It's still his name and face behind it, right? So he's getting that ability to connect on a personal level versus just having Athlean X and no one else behind it. And I've done the same thing with freedom. And I struggle with that because I'm like, well, freedom should be its own thing, but there still has to be a name and a face behind it. So that's what I recommend now is you could do a brand, but put your personal brand behind it and it's powered by. So let's call it like the powered by model, right? So whatever that, that company is going to be still using. So even my social media, even this YouTube is still my Ryan Lee name, but I'm promoting and putting it behind freedom. And think it's funny how things are taking off once I shifted away from just making it all about me to making it more about something beyond me. So I like that personal name, personal brand, powering a company that is down the road, possibly sellable. If you want to go that, that route, totally up to you. 
Again, there's no right or wrong. Do what feels good. But that's that's what I'm recommending right now. Okay. So question. Let's see. All right, so this question came in from Jay. He said, your basic recommendations on getting traction to get that first win so you can get and keep momentum rolling forward. I would say the most basic thing we can do, absolute basic, bare bones, step one, some kind of landing page. Some kind of landing page. It doesn't matter. It doesn't have to be a cheat sheet, checklist, ebook, course, it could just be sign up for my newsletter, right? That's what freedom is right now. If you go to freedom.com slash subscribe, freedom.com slash subscribe. And let me show you. That's, that's what it is. It's a newsletter subscription. There's nothing else to getting with it. I'm going to test front end offers, but it's really, really simple. So that is... It's, it's a two-step thing, right? So get your landing page up. Get that up. Then, hold on. I had to, I had to pause for a second. <laughs> My daughter's texting me questions. Um, you get your landing page up. Then where is your traffic play going to be? Where are you going to focus your traffic on? Is it going to be whatever platform it's going to be? If you're going free, is it going to be YouTube? Is it going to be Facebook? Is it going to be LinkedIn? Is it going to be Twitter? Is it going to be Instagram? Like, what's the thing? Like, pick one main one main platform and then a secondary platform, or is it going to be paid traffic? But again, quick, quick way to get traction, landing page, pick the one thing and just start creating. That's it. Don't overthink it. I would recommend see what's working, see what other people are doing. So, Jay, I know you're, you're a PT, so... I would look, see what other PTs have done really well and say, okay, maybe I can model this person, but change it with my content and my voice. But let me just model some of their frame, their frameworks and do it for me. And then just, just be consistent. Like every single day doing something to grow it. We don't do enough, none of us, but landing page, platform, and just go, don't overthink it. Don't worry about, well, I don't have a course to sell. I don't have any of that. Don't worry about that stuff. That can come later. Get them on the list and then just start emailing. But that would that's what I would do just to get your first win, just to get the ball rolling. Okay. Let's see. Oh, Dave, I, I don't know if that was a question. I think you were just making a statement. Okay. Let me see this question. Let me just read this. Okay, so this question came in from Amit. Uh, what would be your advice in starting a membership with a physical deliverable, like a monthly subscription box? I would say my advice is know the numbers. So I've had three different physical nutrition companies, and each of them are really, really, really intensive when it comes to the back end the fulfillment, the, the supply chain. Like it's, it's a totally different game because we don't look at the numbers close enough. We really don't, especially with physical products. And I was guilty of this. And you can have something, and I use this example in our Freedom Essentials, like I could sell this water bottle. And, and if you're not sophisticated in the numbers in the business, you might say, well, okay, this is great. This one, hey, I have my Uncle Jerry as a friend who owns a factory, I can buy these things for 10 and sell them for 20. I'm doubling my money all day, baby. But little things first, like your merchant fees, that takes a couple of points right there. How? What's the fulfillment fee? They may charge $1.50 plus 50 cents just to get it out the door. So now your $10, your $10 profit is down to like $7. And then are you charging for shipping? Are you not charging for shipping? What about refunds? What about stocking fees? What about, well, the warehouse is going to charge you $50 per pallet per month. What about getting these 
2,000 water bottles over to the fulfillment house, to the warehouse. It might cost 50 cents per bottle. So there's all of these things that we have to take into account. And I would say a minimum, if you're looking to do a subscription box or anything physical, minimum, 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 six times markup. If I'm buying this beauty for, for 10, I'm selling it for at least 60, at least, because you're not even talking about marketing costs. How much is it going to cost you to get a customer? If you're doing Facebook ads, it can cost you $30 just to get one person to buy. So that's the biggest piece of advice I can give you is know your numbers. And if you have to hire someone, hire a spreadsheet nerd for him or her to go through your numbers and say, all right, here's your margin. Here's what you can do. And here's what you could spend. A, a good friend of mine started a company and I, I begged him not to because he told me his product costs. And I said, I've done the numbers. It's not going to work. There's not enough margin. He's like, yeah, but it's going to be a great product. People are going to love it. And I said, that's not the point. The point is you're not going to be able to advertise. You're not going to be able to generate a new customer. And you're going to lose money on each one. And unfortunately, after trying it for two, three years, he lost a fortune. Um, and, I, and I hate seeing that, but it starts with the number, the, the money. And I think it was Dan Kennedy who said, you can't outmarket bad math. So that would be my biggest piece of advice is before you even think about traffic, before you think about marketing, before you think of the name, before you think of anything, what's going to be in the box, what's shipping costs, what's warehousing, merchant, like everything. And then look at the number and say, is it realistic? Like, okay, this water bottle cost me 10. Is it realistic that I can sell it for 60? Right. Or my subscription box costs me 20 because they're getting a t-shirt and a hat, like, you know, a USB drive. But is it realistic that I'm going to sell it for 100 a month? No way. Then walk away. Because that's when you get into trouble. So start there. Once you get that, and you're like, okay, here's the numbers. Here's what I can make work. And then we start thinking, what's the traffic strategy? Where am I going to play? What's my positioning? How am I going to be different than the other subscription boxes? Can I make money if the average person only stays for three months? Right? Is there back-end opportunity? Is... What does the supply chain look like? Is it, am I going to run out of things, you know, to sell and to offer? What does this look like three years down the road? So there's a lot of things to think about. So I hope this was helpful for you if you're looking to start any type of physical continuity program. You guys are giving me softballs. I thought there was going to be some hard questions. I thought you guys were going to give me some hard questions. This is, come on, this is easy stuff. I'm just messing with you, by the way. Okay. So, Ashley, you know what, Abel? I'm going to answer this because this is really, really specific. I'll message you. We'll, we'll talk offline with this. Um, Abel, by the way, best-selling author, was host of a fitness TV show, um, really popular podcast, Fat Burning Man. I'm giving you a little shout. Look up Abel James, and he could sing too. Uh, but Abel, we'll we'll chat offline for that because that's a really specific thing. Uh, but Abel's the man. Okay. <clears throat> so here's. Oh, this is a good one. Oh, this is a good question. You're just giving me some, some some juicy meat here, Larry Goodman. So. The question is quality affiliates for your site. I'm going to do a separate training just on that. I'm going to do one separate, maybe another YouTube live just on getting quality affiliates and keeping them because there's so much to talk about. But a few just kind of big, big things because I've been in the affiliate game for a really long time. We've had one of my supplement companies was 95% affiliate driven. And we paid out so much. We had our top affiliate, we paid them over a million dollars a year just in commissions. That's how much we were into the affiliate world. So the affiliate game, it's not a question uh, for the top affiliates, right? If you're trying to recruit top affiliates, the ones who know what they're doing, it's not a question of percentages. And that's where we get stuck. We say, well, should I give 50%? Should I give 60%? Should I give 80%? Okay. 
it's all about how much are they going to make per promotion or per sale or per campaign. Like that's all they care about. If you're selling a hundred thousand dollar product and they get one percent, but they're making more money than a hundred percent on a twenty dollar sale, they don't care. It's one percent. They don't care about the percentage. What the heck does that matter? If they're getting one percent of a million dollar sale, does it matter? Right. So we get focused on the wrong things. It's never about the percentage. It's about the total amount of money they're going to make. That's it. <clears throat> now, you have to look at your own business and say, what does my business model look like? What am I selling on the back end? So if I only have one thing, if I'm only selling a, a, a $50 program and that's it, I have nothing else to sell, no back end, no upsells, nothing. That's it. That's my whole business. Then you can't give away 100% because you can get customers for free all day long, but you're not going to make any money. But if you have, you're selling a $50 front end product and you have a $20 a month program on the back or a $200 program or t-shirts, whatever it is on the back end, and that's where your profit is, then my answer is, well, Ryan, how much should I give? And I say, as much as you can. Give them everything. Everything. <clears throat> if it's a digital product, so if I'm selling a hundred dollar digital product, freedom, like a let's say a freedom course, I'm going to sell on the front, <clears throat> and I have an affiliate who wants to promote. I would give them a hundred percent because I know that a percentage of those buyers are going to sign up for the membership, and that's where the profit is. So I don't care about making money on the front. If you can acquire a customer for free. You, you're printing money. Like that's how you become a millionaire. <clears throat> so you give it all away. So it's a, it's a question of looking at your own business. What does the back end look like? And giving as much as possible. And knowing that different affiliates are incentivized by different things. But here's what I know. The top affiliates, what's called the super affiliates, the ones who are going to drive 90% of your stuff, care about the money. That's it. That's the game. And when we ran our supplement company, it was called ProGrade, where almost all of our sales were through affiliates. We were doing seven figures a month in sales. There were like seven or eight. Of, we had 2,200 affiliates. There were seven or eight that drove about 95% of the sales. They were monsters. And the other, you know, 97% of the affiliate, the other 2,000, 800 people, whatever, uh, took up most of our time because they were answering most, they were asking most questions. The unsophisticated affiliates are like, could you do a separate list for me, a separate site for me? And my, and they want you to do all this stuff because they don't realize how much work's involved. And then they send like three people to you. And it's frustrating. So if you're going after the top, as much as they can make it, as much as you can give, and you might even give more. So if if you're like, well, I can actually lose, I could spend $10 a customer. So $50 product, say, you know what, Joe, you promote it. I'll pay you the 50 and I'll give you another 10. How about that? So make you as much as possible and they'll promote you all day long. Affiliates, baby. It's a great game if played correctly, but it's a drug because when it's working, like you're addicted to it. But when they leave, you're in trouble. So, so no matter what, you still have to make sure there's another way for you to get customers. And that was a $100 million lesson we learned with ProGrade is we relied entirely on affiliates. And once they started leaving, once we had a competitor and they started bringing them over, we were done. Like we were out of business. We went from millions of dollars a month to millions of dollars in debt almost overnight. So be really careful. Affiliates can become a crutch. So have some, have a few good ones, take care of them but I wouldn't put all of my hopes on an affiliate program. How are you guys enjoying this? Bring in the real today. I like this. I really think that I'm going to do more of these. I'm gonna, I think I am. So if you're enjoying this, if you have not signed up for freedom yet, I mean, come on, it's free for the newsletter. And then if you're liking this and you want more, you're like, I want more Ryan. 
let's go in the clubhouse because we're going to do the live training every month. Um, we're going to, we have the private community. We have the new, every time I'm, I'm having these new kind of breakthrough things, I'm doing some private posts for us. So there's some really cool stuff happening. And I promise it's going to be worth the 80 cents a day, which is a third of like a cup of coffee or whatever. Coffee is like $10 a cup of coffee now. So it's like one fifth of a price of coffee. I promise it's worth it. I promise. And I th I'll throw together another, I'll put some cool bonuses in there too. So just come on in, join the club. Okay, let's see. Let me do another question here. Let me just see this first. Do you think it's tacky to do a sport training from your home? Okay, let me answer this here. So the question from We Play Pickleball. I wonder what sport we play pickleball is <laughs> referring to. Do you think it's tacky to do a sport training from home as an unprofessional? Won't it be taken seriously? I don't think it's tacky at all. Whatever we do with marketing, we have to use our perceived tackiness, right, or unprofessionalism. Use it to our advantage. So how can you spin it and say, this is this is an advantage. And I would say the advantage is, look, we can't always get to a pickleball court. So let me show you cool stuff you can do at home. Like I'm doing this here from home because I want to show you, you can do this training anywhere. So I think you spin it and use it to your advantage and just be upfront about it and say, look, if you want the fancy people with the fancy editing and the Steven Spielberg camera work, you know, showing you overhead shots on a pickleball thing, that's cool. I'm not your guy. But if you're more like just down to earth, you want straightforward, you want stuff you can do at home, come on. We play pickleball and let's do it. So I use everything to my advantage. I mean, look, even here now, I used to have this, this office and the arcade machines and all this cool stuff. I just, I didn't need it anymore. And I was never going there. And every time I went there, <laughs> I would nap for two, three hours <laughs> and I gained 20 pounds. I'm like, all right, this probably isn't good for me. So now I'm home and I have a little corner of my basement set up. I got the 90 inch flat screen TV and a couch over there and my records. Like, does it matter? Like, are you saying, well, Ryan, I'm not going to listen to you because you're doing this from home. You don't have a fancy schmancy office. It doesn't matter. So I'm using it. And freedom is about working from home, working from anywhere. So pickleball, your thing could be, let's do it from home. Or so... As you're progressing and maybe as it's generating more money and you want to start doing it from a court, you could start to do that too. So don't feel as if you do one thing and now you're locked in there forever. Like that doesn't necessarily mean you have to do that forever, but you can always shift. Like, hey, we're doing some cool stuff now. We're going to go to the court. Let's go. So that's when you can start. But don't think you can't do home because you're never going to do the pro stuff and vice versa. So start where you are. And then people are going to go for the ride with you. That's that's my advice when you're playing some pickleball. Oh, I just want to share this. Thanks, Ryan. This is great. Happy you're back teaching us. I finally implemented your advice a few years ago, making a ton of money and helping a ton of people. Clubhouse, here I come. If you want to see someone who just lives life to the fullest, just follow Billy Beck. Again, he's been training Tony Robbins for years, and we go back, Billy, at least over 20 years, and uh, just love this guy. So thank you. See, these are the people that are going to be playing in the Freedom Clubhouse. Billy Beck, ladies and gentlemen. Billy Beck. That's it. This is Billy Beck Live, everybody. BB3 in the house. All right. Val thanked me for the... Oh, you are very welcome, Val. I love doing this. My my hope for you, for everyone watching this, is that you find that topic that you can do this. Like, how do you know that you're doing the right thing? Right? When we we have this doubt, it's like, is this the right topic? Is this the right brand? Is this the right positioning? Is this what I should be talking about? Can you open up a YouTube live and go live for an hour without a script and actually have 
the the experience, the I, I call it the chops. Do you actually have that? Well, you can go for an hour without a script. I had five little things here. I just wrote 100% retention, pricing template, just so I knew, like, let me cover a few bases in when I did this, this as a live. But can you go live for an hour? And if so, you're heading in the right direction. If not, maybe that's not the right topic for you. So can you go live for an hour? Yes. Can you go live for two? Can you go live for three? Can you go live for 10? Great. You're heading in the right direction. If not, let's start thinking about something else. And maybe you're not the expert. You may say, well, Ryan, I'm really, I love, I don't know, baseball card collecting, but I'm not like the expert. I don't know everything, but can you at least connect with other people and bring them on? So they do the heavy lifting and you're more of a host kind of showing cool things. Why not? Right. But it's got to be something that at least you feel good about. You're like, my God, I can't believe I get paid for this. If you do that, like after this, I'm going to shut this down, this video. I can't believe that I can make money teaching this stuff because I love it. I want you to get there with whatever it is you're talking about. It could fitness, it could be personal development. It could be gardening. It could be building a gardening business. It could be flipping real estate. Don't chase the money. And, and, and I'm not going to live in you know, fantasy land and say, if you do what you love, the money will come. That is BS. That is lazy because I've done so many coaching calls with people who love what they do, who are really good at what they do, and they're, and they're broke. They're dying. They're like, man, my business is struggling. I have nine YouTube views. Like they're dying. It's it's not that. It's you start with that, but then you got to put in the work. And you have to sometimes put yourself out there. And if you do have the chops, if you got the confidence, nothing in the world is going to be is going to beat you doing something live. Because your competition, if they don't have this experience, they can never do this, right? If they can't do it, you can. Now, all of a sudden, and I know this isn't like a competition. Oh, I got to beat everyone. But you know what? Come to is. I'm rediscovering my inner athlete. I was captain of my college track team. Like I'm discovering that athletic competitiveness again. I've seen, I, I took, I was basically away for like 10 years. I've seen all these young guys come up. They're making up stuff. They never actually built businesses. I'm like, you know what? Let's go. Let's go. And I'm doing it live now. And you can do the same thing because if they don't have it, they're not going to be able to do it. And there's nothing that's going to show your experience and your love for whatever it is you're teaching better than you being able to come on and riff. Nothing. If you didn't know me before and you're watching this live, man, this guy, Ryan, he either really knows his stuff he is the biggest BSer in the world. Like he's just making up stuff. I do know my stuff. But if you know yours, then show it. And if you can show it live, I mean, it's going to be really hard to beat. So, but we got to get out of our comfort zone. So let's go. We got this. And that just turned into another video I'm using. Uh, I'm actually... Uh, going to be, depending when you're watching this this video, I'm doing this live. We're going away to London next week. So I'm hoping I'm going to have like 30 videos now on YouTube. This is great. You guys rock. Uh, Paul just said, I learned more from this live than from all the other courses I've purchased from the so-called gurus. I'm going to be joining the clubhouse. It's a no-brainer. Paul, thank you. I appreciate that. Here's the $10. Uh, no, <laughs> thanks, Paul. Yeah, look, I'm not going to guru bashing is so is so in, but you got to pick. I, I would say no matter who it is you follow, or who you listen to. Make sure it's someone who, you know, they know what they're talking about. You like them, you respect them and you they have kind of the lifestyle you want. You have to be really careful who you follow. I remember when I first got started, there were. Two really well-known marketers. I'm not going to mention their names. Actually, two marketers and one was like personal development. 
authors and you know courses and stuff and i was looking and i started hearing their story all of them had and i'm prefacing this i'm not perfect okay i'm not saying i'm perfect i'm as far from it, it none of us are perfect but they all had like they were all on their third marriage one guy hadn't spoken he has three kids didn't speak to any of them one guy i think was on his fourth marriage. like he didn't speak to his kids. He was getting sued by his brother. Like all of this stuff. Like, I don't want that life. Here I was in my 20s and I'm looking at these marketing. Like I can learn some marketing from them, but I'm not modeling my life after them. So I purposefully never like started following them because I didn't want to end up like them, like miserable, alone, no relationships because it's all about the work. So Make sure whoever you're following, whoever you listen to, don't listen to 100 people because then it's going to be too many voices, especially conflicting voices. And follow someone who vibes with you on a business level and a personal level. And you're like, okay, I like this person. I trust them. I like what they're doing. Let's go. So that's that's what I would suggest if you're looking to kind of model someone in a business. And, you know, especially when it comes to productivity and that kind of stuff. I <laughs> there's this whole wave of people. And you know what? I'm going to do a, I'm going to do a separate video for that just talking about productivity and time management and all that stuff because there's a lot of really cool things we, we can explore when it comes to time management especially for busy people. I have four kids. So you know, it's one thing to do if you're single, but if you have kids, time management and how you run your business is very very di very different than if you don't. So Let's keep going. More stuff. If you're liking this, be sure to subscribe to YouTube and be sure to join me and everyone in freedom.com, the free newsletter. And then for those who are really into it, upgrade to the clubhouse. Okay. Let me keep going with these comments. This, this snow day is turning into like a marathon because I was going to do an hour. Let's go. Let's go. Right, let me see more questions coming in. Okay. Let me see this. Best way to test a subscription product to see if it works. Concerned if I get one person in on a kid that one food dude for 20 a month. All right. So this is a question from Matthew. Hold on. All right, so this is a question from Matthew King. The best way to test a subscription product to see if it will work, concern I'll get one person in and we'll have to cater that one dude for a month. Yeah, <laughs> you will. That, but what's the risk? Okay, so it's one person and you do it for 30 days. And if it doesn't work, at least you know, right? It's better than catering to them for a year. So everything in this business does require a little bit of risk. So I would either, so either, yes, you cater to them and you keep it open and you keep trying to get new people in, or let's say you're two weeks into it and your offer just is bombing. It's not working. You're like, this is not working at all. Then you, you message this person and say, Hey, thanks for joining. It just, it just didn't work out how I wanted. I'm going to cancel it. I'm going to refund you your $20 and I wish you the best. And that's it. So either you, you keep going or you just refund the 20. I, I, there's not really much else you could do. Uh, but that's the only way to really test an offer, especially a subscription, I'm going to give you a secret, is to launch it. Like that's the only way. It, you can ask everybody. You can survey your list of 100 people, 1,000 people, 100,000 people. And it's like, oh, my God great. It sounds awesome. I'm in, I'm in. And then, Hey, give me your credit card. Ghosted. <laughs> They're gone. They're gone. It's like when you had your, your idea for like, Oh, I got this great idea. I'm going to sell these cool like paper clips and you know, and your, your aunt Sally's like, Oh my God, Joey, when you launch them, I'm going to buy them. And then you launch them. And then aunt Sally's blocking you. <laughs> your, your number is getting blocked. Uh, the only way to know is to put it out there and actually ask people for the order. That's it. You can you can split test and do ads and which one looks better and blah, blah, blah. But at the end of the day, the only way you're going to know is to make it live. 
and to mitigate your risk as much as possible. Again, by not, so maybe you don't offer the yearly, you just start off with a monthly and let's see how it goes. Let's see if we get some people coming in. And if this person's doing it, you only get one, either refund or you do it for the month and you got a lesson learned. And at least you got a month of content that you could possibly repurpose. So hopefully that helps. Kevin um, asked, are there subscription box? Of yes, there are a bunch. I haven't used any. Uh, I know there's software like CrateJoy, um, but there's not one I can speak to personally because in, in a previous thing here, we talked about physical, um, the numbers and knowing your numbers and your metrics. And I, every time I looked to start a subscription box, I couldn't make the numbers work. I'm like, man, it would be so cool. And that was originally one idea for freedom when I when I got back control of the name and the brand. I'm like, yeah, I could do a cool subscription box. And you guys will get like a cool t-shirt, like a little book. And, then, and every time I ran the numbers, it didn't back out. I would have had to charge like $79 a month. And as much as you like me, you're probably not spending $80 a month for like a t-shirt and a book. Probably. I, maybe some of you will. Most of you won't. So I don't know one personally. Um, if I find one, Kevin, though, I'll look around and I'll and I'll uh, drop it into the the clubhouse. Abel's love in the Q and A. I'm always bringing heat here, Abel. I'm I'm definitely doing more of these. Kevin, I'll message you separately. I know you have a couple questions about clubhouse stuff. Um, my guess is clubhouse for a good place for fitness pros. Absolutely. I mean, we just said Billy Beck's going and what else do you need? No, it is. I, I mean, my, I started online in health and fitness. I mean, that was my thing. So yeah, it's, it's definitely a good place. I mean, we, we, we have a lot, of, we have all different markets, but we definitely have a lot of health and fitness pros as well, which reminds me, I'm going to do another little training here. Ready? Let me think about this for a sec. Because I've, I want to show you the first two memberships. Oh, let me stretch for a sec here. Patricia said, uh, hold on while I'm getting ready. That I can't believe you're still live. Totally agree with people who resonate to follow. Love Freedom Clubhouse already. Thank you, Patricia. And, and thank you for joining. So, so I started my first membership site back in 2001. And actually, hold on. I'm going to start that over again. Even though we're doing live, just rewind the live. Zip. Hey, guys. <laughs> so I started my first membership site in, in 2001. And this is what it was. This was the very first version. And some of you on might actually remember this. It was I had been writing free articles for like two years because that was my background. I was... I was captain of my track team in college and I was getting my master's. I have a master's in exercise physiology and I was a gym teacher at the time. And I was teaching, I was writing about speed training and I took all of these free articles and I just put it behind a paywall. And this was the very first membership site. It was, I think it was around $50 a year. And Dwayne has actually become one of my best friends. We, we go back so far, but it was just about, the idea was, okay, can I take all this information and make it a membership site? But what I want to share with you today, the lesson for today is listening to your market, right? So what happened is I was going all in with this and I was teaching this online strength and conditioning. This was, again, this was really early. This was before Facebook, before YouTube, before social media. And strength coaches started saying, Ryan, this is really cool, but how do I build my own business? How do I market my business? So what happened was I got enough of that with that. I created a spinoff site and it was called personal trainer, you PTU personal training. University. And this was all about the training of this. And this was another membership site. So this is when I started to create multiple streams of recurring revenue. Now this, I would only recommend you creating multiple memberships and recurring revenue streams. If you have one really super dialed in, you have the team, you have a process, you have everything working, then I would consider doing it, but you have to have a number first. So you can't just jump from one thing and say, okay, well, 
I have eight members. Let me just build something else now. And now all of a sudden you split your time in half. I would say if you're going to do it, make sure one is really working well. And it's like a well-oiled machine. And whatever that goal is, if whatever if your goal is 5,000 a month or 10 or 100,000 a month, <clears throat> don't even think of doing something else until you hit that initial goal. Then you can start doing maybe multiple streams of income. But I want to show you that I didn't start there. I started with this. And then we had the second site as well. So you can create multiple streams, but, and you can shift. You can do a lot of things, but have that goal first before you start doing multiple things. All right. Let me just do another question. Hold on. Okay. So this is going off, <clears throat> going off of Matthew's question. Even when building a list from zero, would you only give it two weeks? Or would you just look at other things like your marketing strategy first? So the question is, you, I, two weeks is not enough for anything. Like two weeks is nothing. Especially if, you, if you're building from scratch. As much as I hate to say, it's more like two years. Like you, you, this is... This really is a long-term game. This is something that you've got to put your head down and you look at the people who are most successful. It's they're doing it for years, really. Um, I would say you really, if you're absolutely focused on traffic and a specific platform, you're probably not going to see the fly will really start to get over that initial resistance until about month 12. Just getting real with you. Like, this is different than paid traffic, right? Paid traffic, you can start at 50 a day and then go to 60 and then 80, then 100. And before you know it, you're spending two, 3,000 a day. Totally different game. I'm talking free traffic, starting from scratch, no budget. Give yourself a year. It is. That's the truth. I know people don't want to hear it. I know that if I were a guru selling a $2,000 instant traffic from Facebook group course, I would say something different, but that's the truth. Starting from zero, all social media, 12 months minimum before you really start seeing stuff. And I know it's hard because that's when that's when we start to lose that that excitement and that energy. Like, oh man, this is hard. Like I don't feel like doing this. And man, I only got two new email subscribers today. And that's when you feel like giving up. But that's when you got to push. Like that's when you have to just keep going forward as hard as it is. This business is simple, but it's not easy. And the ones who who are still around are the ones who have pushed through and just keep going. So Two weeks is absolutely not enough. I would keep going um, and just keep keep going with it. Kevin's questions about OPE. Kevin, would, Freedom is different than o, OPE is a separate membership I have. Um, I'm still running that for another another month or two. So you could stay in there or you can cancel that and join Freedom, whatever you want. But they're two different things. I'm, I'm Right now I'm balancing... Uh, actually, I'll, I'll make that a separate, I'll make that a separate video here. You see how I'm doing and teaching at the same time? So how, how do I phrase this? There's, there's times in your business where you're going to want to pivot. You're doing something and you're like, Okay, this is good. Maybe it's working. Maybe it's not. But you're like, this isn't the direction I want to go. So I was under, I was building my personal brand under Ryan Lee. I had a membership called OPE. It was good. It was bringing a good revenue, but it was a little bit stuck. I'm like, but I, I really want to have like a bigger impact. And I wanted to have something where I can have a lower price and just reach tens of thousands of members. That was my goal. And it wasn't going to happen the way it was currently set up. So when I did the shift and I launched something new, you have this, this weird kind of in-between phase, right? Where you're starting to transition over. You have people who are with you and knew you for one thing, not a lot, right? And none of us are really famous. We're just not. <laughs> Maybe niche famous, but we're not. Famous. There's still billions of people who don't know who any of us are. That's fine. So 
but you've got your core people maybe, and they, they know you, they like you, they trust you, but then you're shifting to something else. You're pivoting. So you've got this weird kind of middle ground where you're balancing both worlds. You're, you're kind of saying, okay, to the, to the people who were with you before, we're doing this new thing and some of them might not want to go. Some will, some are like, Ryan, I'm in no matter you, got, no matter what you got, I'm there. And there's some like, but I like the old thing. So my only advice is to tell the old people what's going on, say, this is what we're doing now. I think you're going to like this. If not, I totally understand. And just know that this weird kind of middle phase will eventually fade. Sometimes it takes a few weeks. Sometimes it takes a few months. But I do promise you that people, the right people are going to move on with you and some won't. And that's okay. You're never going to be able to keep the same 100%. You're never going to keep 100% of your people happy, no matter what you do. And that's just part of the game. And that's okay. But just know that there's going to be highs and there's going to be lows. And there's there's this often this messy middle when you're in the middle of a pivot and know that it is going to be better, especially when you're when you're all in with this new thing and people seeing your enthusiasm behind it and that you're really behind it. So the messy middle is a part of business with pivots, but it's something you will get through. I promise. Just stick with it. And uh, you'll see all the good stuff happening. So I think what we're going to do, I think we're going to start wrapping this baby up because we've, uh, there's a lot going on uh, today. So I hope if you enjoyed this and you want me to do more YouTube lives like this, just say more lives. Yes. Whatever you can. I would really appreciate it. I just want to see that you guys are liking this and want me to do more of these. And I'm happy to, because this is fun. I can do this all day long. So I would love to do more if you want more. I could commit to doing them once a month. I could commit to doing them once a week. Uh, I'll do these damn things every day. If I'm getting people coming in and they're liking it and some of you are joining Clubhouse, it's working out, everything's cool. What else do I have to do? I mean, this is my business. I love doing this. I love talking about market. And you make it easy because your question with your questions, I don't have to prepare anything. I didn't have to prepare slides and PowerPoints and keynotes. I just come on and help. So this is fun. So thank you. Thank you for being here. Again, if you if you like what I'm doing, if you want more, if you want access to me in the private group and the community, go to freedom.com. Click on that little thing up here called Clubhouse. Click on join the Clubhouse and then jump in. You could do, you could try it for a month. It's $29. You could do it for a year. You save 20%. Totally up to you. No pressure. If you're like, nah, I'm good. I don't want to join. That's that's fine too. Uh, you will be dead to me, but <laughs> that's fine. <laughs> but uh, I will... I will do more of these. This was fun. And uh, thank you for being here. Be sure if you haven't yet also subscribe to the YouTube channel. So that way you could stay updated when I'm doing more of these lives. And thank you for coming with questions. And thank you for your enthusiasm. Thank you for everyone. I see new people joining Clubhouse right now. Thank you for everyone there. Make sure to go into the group and introduce yourself. And we're going to help you ask you ask more questions in there. I'll do live video reviews in there as well. So we're just beginning this journey together. This new freedom is only four days old. So we're already getting some good momentum. So thank you again for being here, putting your trust in me and uh, having me stumble through this new software. But this is pretty cool. This has been fun. So subscribe to this. Get on my free newsletter at freedom.com. If you're really interested in more stuff, join me in the clubhouse. And this is Ryan Lee signing off. Thank you so much for being here. Ladies and gentlemen, take care and bye-bye.